Hello, how you doing? It's Phil Thatch, and today I have a really exciting lens to take a look at, and it is a lens by a company called TT Artisan, and it is their 75 millimeter F1.5 M42 mount full manual lens. And this lens is, it's not officially, I, TT Artisans is not marketing it this way, but it is a replica of an old Carl Zeiss lens, the 75 millimeter Biotar F1.5 vintage lens from the 60s and even earlier than that. Just a really awesome lens. Now, that lens is highly sought after in the used market. You'll find them on eBay for over $1,000, sometimes over $2,000. And people aren't trying to get that lens because of exceptional image quality. As a matter of fact, that lens is known for being only sharp, wide open, right in the middle. And the rest of the frame, like in the corners where my hands are now, would be soft. Even if you are focusing there, it would still be soft. That's kind of a characteristic of this lens. But what this lens is known for, and the reason this lens is sought after, this old Carl Zeiss 75 1.5, is because it has swirly bokeh. The bokeh makes a swirl if you get your shot just right. And here it is, the TT Artisan version, the unofficial copy of that lens. It is heavy. It has all metal construction except for the glass parts. The front lens cap screws on to the metal threads. This is an M42 mount, so you can use this on any mirrorless camera or on old M42 mount cameras, but there's adapters to adapt M42 mount to every camera out there. So I really like that. I'd much rather have an M42 mount of a manual focus lens than an actual Z mount or an actual R mount or an actual E mount because you put the adapter on and it'll work on any of those. Here's the rear cap, it's also metal. And because it's M42, it screws on. So like I was saying, this lens has the same optical formula as that Carl Zeiss lens. I think it's six elements and four groups. And the aperture ring is right here on the front. It is clicked, goes from 1.5 to, I can't remember if it goes to 16. Yeah, it just goes to 16, not 22. The focus ring on this thing is 180 degrees, which you wouldn't think that'd be good, but on a manual focus lens, you want a lot of throw on your focus ring so you can definitely dial in perfect focus easily. You know, when you move something that goes 180 degrees, when you move it a little bit, it doesn't go real far to go past your focus point. And this lens being an F1.5 and 75 millimeters, the depth of field wide open is gonna be razor thin. Look at that wide open aperture at 1.5. I believe it has 13 aperture blades, which is really nice. So when you do stop it down, it should give you a nice round bokeh, but wide open, it'll give you swirly bokeh. So what we're gonna to do today is Heather and I are gonna take a trip from Chattanooga where we live up to Knoxville and visit my daughter and her husband. And we're gonna take this lens and we're gonna put it on my Nikon Z8, which you can see I've got a, a M42 to Z adapter on there. And the way these things work is you just, you just screw it on. It just actually screws on and there are located around the lens barrel, you probably can't see it because they're tiny. There's three little places with screws because sometimes an M42 lens won't line up just right to where the top of the lens is at the top. And I actually went and bought a, a T5, a super tiny T5 Torx screwdriver so I could loosen those three and get this thing indexed just perfectly and then tighten them down so it looks perfect. But I'm really excited. Like I said, we're going to go to Knoxville. We're going to take some pictures of my daughter and uh, see if I can get some swirly bokeh for you. So stay tuned for that. All right, so we are now in Market Square, and this is my daughter. And there's an area of Market Square that has some trees. And I thought that would be great because there's a little bit of shade 
it was a sunny day. There's a little bit of shade on her and there's trees in the background with some sun making its way through the trees. So there's lots of specular highlights. And the specular highlights is what show up as the swirly bokeh. And you can see it right here. All the pictures in this video that I'm going to show you are going to be wide open at f1.5 unless otherwise mentioned. So here's a picture of my daughter. Lots and lots of swirly bokeh. Really good separation. And in the center, I had my focus point on her eyes. And this is manual focus, so you, you, you're doing it. It's all up to you. It's not the camera's autofocus system. I was able to get pretty sharp there on her eyes. Here is my daughter and her husband in the same location. I had to step a little bit further back to get them both in the shot. And I think my focus point was probably, I'm not sure where it was, but I missed it is the problem. This is one one thousandth, so this is not motion blur. I just missed focus. It's hard to get two people in focus with a manual focus lens at f1.5. But even though there are some imperfections in the focus, and look, look at the how this is just going crazy out of focus right here. Even with all those problems, I still love this picture. I still love this picture. Look at this photograph of Heather in that same area of Market Square in Knoxville, Tennessee. I did a much better job getting her eyes nice and sharp in this shot. And all these pictures have been edited just a little bit, kind of a mild edit, and I have run them through Topaz. And, you know, this is ISO 100, so it doesn't need to be denoised. But I just like the way the Topaz denoise program sharpens. So there's not any sharpening done in Lightroom. This is all in the Topaz denoise program on its default setting. And you can see the amazing swirly bokeh. These trees had some Christmas lights or something on them, blue ones and green ones, and even they are going crazy with the swirl. So really love the way these photographs are turning out there at Market Square. Now this is an alley that's near Market Square, and on this there's virtually no specular highlights. And so this is a demonstration of what the bokeh looks like when it's not being swirly. And you can see it's very smooth, very, very nice, very creamy. I think there might be some chromatic aberration in this just a little bit, not bad. But really this shot right here, the lens is performing like a modern lens. There's not many problems with it. You can see her hair is more out of focus than it probably would be at f1.5 on a modern lens. And I'll kind of show you a brick wall shot that demonstrates how the focus gets bad around the corners and edges later in the video. Here's Casey in that same alley, but this time my daughter has bright light on her face. I set the shot up that way and no problems with this shot either. Here's my daughter and her husband and I have once again, in an attempt to get good focus on both of them, I've missed it on both of them instead of at least, I should have at least nailed focus on one of them, but no specular highlights over here. So not much swirl going on, but over here on this side, where the sun is bright, there are some specular highlights and you can see swirl on this side. This is an up close shot of a water fountain and bottle refill station, kind of in the same area as the early shots. And I don't, I don't think I'm all the way at minimum focus distance, but I'm pretty close. And there's some chromatic aberration in this. You can definitely see some up here. You know, if you're looking for the perfection of a modern lens, you're just not going to find it in this lens. It's this amazing swirly bokeh and gray separation that make this lens attractive. Here's a man who was busking. He was doing a little violin playing, and I tipped him in a little bit and uh, made his picture. Talked to him for a little while. He was super cool, and I was happy to talk to him. This picture I'm really not all that thrilled with. I failed to get sharp focus on him, and there's lots of problems. So that was not my best work right there, but I thought I would share it with you anyway. Now here we are back in an area with some trees that give us the specular highlights and the swirly bokeh, and I had my daughter and her husband put their heads together, and I like the way this turned out. Here's another busker that I tipped and asked if I could take her picture, and she said I could, 
And gosh, I wish I could have gotten a picture of her with, with a swirly background because I really love the way this picture turned out with the exception of the background is just kind of bland. I do like the reflection of a building across the road and how it is creamily out of focus. And there are some swirly specular highlights just a little bit here. But anyway, picture turned out cool. This is another tree area and I turned the camera vertical and made this photograph of my daughter. I did crop it some closer to four by five instead of two by three, but just a lot of swirl. And I thought that the vertical shot was gonna be the best way to do it, but it turns out that the horizontal shot, this is one of my wife, Heather, and it's a nice horizontal shot of her in that same area. And wow, 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 look at the swirly bokeh in this one, just amazing. This lens, you know, for head and shoulders pictures with bright specular highlights in the background, I, I can't imagine a better lens than this. I mean, it's definitely uh, a one or maybe two trick pony. If you stop it down to F8, which I didn't do, or, you know, a, a nice closed aperture, you can get fairly normal looking shots. But I wanted to experiment with the swirly bokeh and the wide openness of it all. And man, look at that picture right there. So Heather took over the camera and she managed to get me nicely in focus. This is in that same area and we did three different apertures for this shot. This first one is wide open at 1.5 and you can see lots of swirly bokeh as we've gotten used to in this video, we've gotten spoiled by in this video. And now this next one, it's gonna be stopped down to F4 and it is a 13 bladed aperture. So even stopped down, the circles are very round and it kind of loses that cat's eye shape that gives it the swirl. So there's not much swirl at F4, but it still has lots of beautiful specular highlights. And uh, I think the bokeh is attractive even at F4 on this kind of head and torso shot that Heather made of me. And now this shot is at F2. I gave a peace sign so I could remember that this was the one that we went back to F2, not wide open at 1.5 and not stop down to F4, but this is at F2. And at F2, there is some swirl, not as much, I don't think, as F5. And it almost, it almost has kind of a soap bubble bokeh look at F2, but it's still swirly. And I think it's probably in terms of sharpness and in terms of chromatic aberration, which there's definitely still some chromatic aberration in this, but probably less than there is in the F1.5 shot. So maybe F2 is the way I should have shot all of these, stopped down just a little bit, but I wanted to shoot wide open like this shot right here is. All right, so I took the camera back over and while Heather and I were taking pictures of each other, my daughter and her husband were making selfies and I decided I would make a photograph of them while they were making photographs of themselves. My focus point is right here on my daughter's eye and as you can see it's nice and sharp this lens is good and sharp in the middle and we've got swirly bokeh all over the place i'm back to f 1.5 for this shot i'm pretty sure now this was a piece of artwork there near market square and my focus point was kind of right in this area and it's pretty sharp there but this metal object really lets you see the weaknesses of this lens, especially wide open. I probably should have made another shot of this at F2, but you can see chromatic aberration. You can see some flaring. You can also see some amazing swirly bokeh here, but this photograph has more problems than features. So again, great lens for head and shoulder portraits, maybe not for everything. And now this is a shot of Heather. I'm leaned up against the wall at 1.5 and she's leaned up against the wall just around the corner. And you can see some swirly bokeh in, in the bicycles across the street. It's a nice portrait lens, definitely a head and shoulder portrait lens. I think if you're doing a full body portrait, you don't quite get the swirl like you can on the head and shoulders or head and torso shots. Really beautiful results can be obtained from this lens. All right, here are some photographs of some bricks in an alley there in Knoxville. And my focus point in all of these was right here in the middle, this little area that has some touch up concrete or something on it. And this is wide open at 1.5 and you can see the center is pretty sharp, wide open at 1.5. And I'm zoomed into 100% and even before I get off the screen, you can already see it getting soft as you head out towards the edges but we are not in the corner 
until we get all the way to here. And you can see the corners are just not sharp. Also, you can see lots of vignetting and that's fine. That's not what this lens is about. This lens is about the amazing swirly bokeh that it can do. It's not going to be the sharpest lens. It's not even going to be close to the sharpest lens in the corners wide open. So this is f 1.5 wide open. This next shot is going to be at, I believe, 2.8. You know, this lens is fully mechanical, so there's no exit data, but I believe the next place I stopped down to was 2.8. And you can see this is 1.5, this is 2.8. So the vignetting is much better at 2.8, but it's still, when you go over here to 100% in the corners, they are still soft. Maybe not as soft, but they are still soft. Now on the next step, I think, I can't remember if I went to 5.6 or F8. And you know, that's just part of having a, I should have written notes. I believe it was F8, but here at F8, there's almost no vignetting and the corners are actually kind of sharp, which, you know, that's fine. But if you're gonna shoot at F8, don't use this lens. You can use your kit lens at F8 and you know, you'll be fine. What makes this lens special is the swirly bokeh that your kit lens can't do. So overall, I have been very happy with the TT Artisan 75 millimeter F 1.5 swirly bokeh M42 mount lens. I think it might be smarter to pick up one of these for $269 than spending over $2,000 for a 60 year old lens that might have fungus growing in it and who knows what else. This thing is gonna be brand new and give you very similar, if not exactly the same, image results. I know I've been very happy with the photos I've been able to make with this one today. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. If you enjoy the content, hit thumbs up. If you want to see some more, subscribe and hit the bell. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye-bye.